Alright guys. Oh, it is a fine, still feeling a little bit like winter night here in uh, Doomsday Trailer. Here on this exciting Friday night, April 5th, 2024. Heading down into the mid-40s tonight. Uh, we have one more beautiful day tomorrow before the shit returns but since it is Friday night we all know what that means it is time for our weekly ain't gonna happen roundup rant where I just went right on the mainstream media and I just found out I got the wrong computer for the oh Jesus Christ you can tell how uh you know, all these other doomers I hear that they spend all of this time, you know, spend all of this time working on setting up their damn uh, videos and shit. And uh, all of this, you know, I, I went on the goddamn mainstream media uh, 30 minutes ago. It took me 30 minutes to get this rant. I, I, I stopped even doing it all week because just any time. And I just stopped after 10 of them, okay, uh, about, about these ain't gonna happens. The mainstream media, I, I didn't even go over, check in with Will Lockett over at uh, medium.com. You, you know, it's, it's just this endless barrage uh, of just talking this total fucking horseshit. You know, with these goddamn clueless fucking morons, who is believing this shit for one second? You know, you don't even have to, just getting through the headlines hurts a doomer's brain. Alright, this is, this is just how they unfolded. I, I, I'm not putting these in any order. This is just how they unfolded on the yeah on Yahoo News on April 5th. Uh, well, we might. I was gonna guess this was the last one, but we'll we'll just uh, start here because I'm already here. How about inside the 300 year long project to live? underwater. Yes. <laughs> Sean Wolpert, the president of Deep, wants not only to speed up our discovery of the oceans, he wants people to live down there too. Uh, I love this one. Okay, here, here you go. It is extremely likely that we will find the treatment for something like cancer in our oceans. If you think about sea sponges, they repel organisms trying to eat them. Blah, blah, blah. It, 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 anyway. Uh, so, you know, what they're trying to get us to believe, and, and, okay, and, and I'm not 100% saying this one ain't going to happen. So what he's talking about, <coughs> you know, in this article is championing, is these underwater research vessels that can go down, like, way down deep, like 600 feet down in the ocean, and where these scientists can spend like a month, I guess 28 days living in an, literally in an underwater laboratory where they can be, you know, and he's talking about, you know, all of these marine biologists and climatologists and all of this shit never mentioned in the article. Who the fuck do you think is going to be in these things? Okay. For every for everybody every one person studying sea sponges, there's going to be nine people looking for little uh, 
uh, you know, little potatoes on the bottom of the ocean and, and, and these goddamn oil companies and green energy companies and all of this shit are, are going to be the ones taking out contracts on these things. Uh, it, it, it's just one more step for, for every one step forward in marine biology and climate scientists saving the fucking coral reefs or whatever. Uh, there, there's going to be nine of these damn planet eaters down there. It, it, it's just one more way to give these planet eaters a ticket to the bottom of the ocean. I would like to give them a ticket to the bottom of the ocean, but as long as we're talking about the oceans, here we go again. Well, are we ever going to hear the end of this one? New technologies could be key to saving the coral reefs. Yes, one method grows reef-ready coral in six to nine months. There you go. So they have found yet one more way to... Uh, here is this way. Robots and mass production techniques are joining forces to restore devastated coral reefs faster than ever before. So we're using robots now. There we go. Here we go. The game-changing solution cannot come soon enough. Yes, atmospheric pollution and rising global temperatures are slated to wipe out 99% of coral by the 2030s. Yes, up until now, coral restoration has been a slow, laborious process. But don't worry, so 99% of corals are going to be gone in the next 10 years and then uh, we're going to have a bunch of robots growing these little baby corals uh, in the damn laboratory. So 99% of coral reefs on this planet are done, and so we're going we're, we're to pack these little, uh, these little underwater labs. We're going to pack them full of robots carrying their little trays uh, of baby coral. Pull your head out of your ass. The coral reefs are fucked. Kiss goodbye the coral reefs, even if they do keep replanting all of this baby coral. What difference does it make, guys? Sorry to be such the bearer of bad news. It ain't gonna happen. I, again, I'm not saying that they're not going to send the fucking robots or whatever down there to plant baby coral. You can plant baby coral till the cows come home. Doesn't make any fucking difference. Coral reefs are fucked. D D D two down, eight to go. All right. We have another game changer. Two in a row. Game changing. All right. <coughs> Scientists make game changing advancement and bid to make solar power cheaper. Yes. Scientists make game changing adva advancement. How about is this latest game changer? Researchers at the University of Michigan may have just made a discovery that could result in solar panels becoming two to four times cheaper in the future. Yes, the discovery centered on a mineral called perovskite. Perovskite, which has been referred to as a quote, miracle, mir miracle, coal material when it comes to solar panels because of its incredible light absorption qualities and relative inexpensiveness. However, perovskite also degrades too quickly for it to be viable in commercially produced solar panels. 
you know, I'm, I'm just reading this uh, long story about these solar panels that they're so cheap right now. This, you know, where China has has flooded the market that solar panels ha have become so cheap that that it that is getting cheaper that 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 people are using solar panels just to you, you, you know like like make fences out of and shit uh they're they're they become the, this <coughs> crap from china and, and so now they're talking <coughs> to make them two to four times cheaper with this miracle material all right there we go <laughs> this is not the onion this is the albuquerque journal the conservative environmentalist proposes bipartisan Climate solutions, yes, the key to climate crisis solutions is making it a nonpartisan issue and balancing the need for fossil fuels while ramping up renewable energy resources. Yes, that's what Benji Backer president and founder of the American Conservation the American Conservation Coalition said at a panel not a solar panel a panel a, a human panel hosted by the New Mexico Oil and Gas Association on Wednesday in Albuquerque yes and Republican and Democrat Lawyers alike sat in the audience. Backer said he doesn't give a shit what party people are in. Nature is a bipartisan matter. Yes, I want the environment to be about the environment. And for a while, it's been about politics. Yes. The demand for energy is not going down. Clean energy like solar and wind needs to be developed, he said, and he said the oil and gas industry can act as an energy partner in the transition. Oh, okay, guys, I, I, I have to admit, uh, now that uh, I, I'm reading this article, I, 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 I haven't misfiled it. This, this one does not belong in the ain't gonna happen. Uh, this, this, uh, this is my bad. I, I, I need to get a no shit Sherlock, and this one goes in the no shit Sherlock. Uh, one that it's no longer the frying pan or the fire. That ain't going to happen anymore. It's no longer a it, it, frying pan or fire ain't going to happen. It's frying pan and the fire. The, the, these goddamn planet eaters, these Republican planet eaters, from the uh, New Mexico Oil and Gas Association sounding just like Joe Biden. Uh, throw it all in there. Drill, baby, drill. Uh, put up millions of acres of your solar panels. So delete that one from the ain't gonna happen. Oh, God. All right. So we've talked about windmills and solar panels and oil and gas, but do not forget the U.S. is aiming to crack the code on deploying geothermal energy at scale. Crack the cold. I, I've got a break in here. Uh, Michael Campy uh, sent me an email. It uh, reminds me titled Sex. 
I saw a mortician's assistant describing having sex with corpses as cracking open a cold one. Uh, I don't know uh, who exactly Michael's running around with, but anyway, so uh, while morticians are cracking a cold one, the U.S. is aiming to crack a hot one, crack the code on deploying geothermal energy at scale. A limitless supply of heat exists beneath our feet within the Earth's crust, but harnessing it at scale has proved challenging. Until now, now a combination of new techniques, government support, and the pressing need to secure continuous clean power in an era of climate crisis means that geothermal energy is finally having its moment in the U.S. All right. So what are they doing? Uh, well, geothermal capacity could increase 20-fold by 2050. So what does that mean? If geothermal increases 20-fold by 2050, that means 10% there you go <coughs> will it ever tell I'm ass assuming <coughs> they're just gonna dig the hole deeper the Department of Energy estimates <coughs> 250 billion dollars will be needed for geothermal projects to become widespread across the country but advocates say such growth is within reach. Mm -hmm. D D. I, I love this one. Uh, <laughs> any headline that has the year twenty five thirty one in it, uh, you you can uh, say it, it doesn't matter what the headline is. You, uh, whatever it is, if you see the the year twenty, that something is going to happen by the year twenty. Well, I mean, there's some things you could put in there that's going to happen by, but but you know that implies humans still living on the planet. Certainly, that implies any sort of a civilization in the year twenty five thirty one. You can ignore the rest of the headline, put it in the ain't gonna happen. This one I'm out of, out of left field here. Japanese people could all be called Sato. Sato by 2531, study warns. Yes. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, okay. I guess we'll have to give a nod to uh, to Paul Beckwith here. Did anybody here? Uh, I Elliot Jacobson sent me this, uh, this 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 absolute embarrassing interview. Uh, Paul Beckwith interviewing. Uh, Oh God, which is which one was it? The guy up in Vermont, McKibben, Paul uh, Beckwith interviewing Bill McKibben. It, it, I mean, it, it really hurt my ears and hurt my brain uh, listening to that. I, 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 you know, Paul's a nice guy. Now, you know, Paul doesn't speak to me. Uh, Paul Beckwith, who I've interviewed twice, uh, I, I will never know why Paul Beckwith, like three years ago, 
Uh, does, does anybody know why Paul Beckwith will never speak to me again? Uh, would somebody call up Paul because he will not answer the phone and will return my calls? But anyway, we're going to give a nod to, uh, to Paul Beckwith. And this one, I was just reading this article in Good News Monday that these, these wacky geoengineering things had uh, gotten the kibosh, I guess, uh, the one in Harvard with the, you know, with the chemtrails uh, got the kibosh put on it. But here we're reading this one. Using decommissioned aircraft carrier, scientists test sun dimming device feeling salty in an effort to halt the worst effects of climate change, scientists are experimenting with a device built atop a decommissioned aircraft air carrier in the San Francisco Bay that would dim the sun by salting the clouds. Yes, you read that right. Researchers from the University of Washington, this is not Harvard, University of Washington are seeking to introduce salt to the clouds over, I guess, San Francisco Bay, and which would theoretically deflect the sun, sun's light back upwards and keep the earth below cooler. There you go. While it is a somewhat outlandish gambit. It's not without scientific precedent. Yes. Alright, so anyway, what's going on here? Uh, so the UW experiment taking place aboard the USS Hornet is looking into what is known as marine cloud brightening. Uh, I'm pretty sure Paul is a big uh, champion of marine cloud brightening, which takes a similar uh, approach to so-called cloud seeding by introducing tiny aerosol particles to clouds. But instead of seeking to make it rain as cloud seeding does, Cloud brightening aims to reflect solar radiation outward and back up. In UW's case, they're using salt as their aerosol of choice. Um, anyway, you be your own judge. Uh, I'm going to end up with uh, that one. Okay. We've all heard about the bird killing, bat killing wind turbines. Research finds wind turbines are threatening bird and bat populations, but experts have some incredibly simple solutions. All right. Skeptics of wind turbines such as Donald Trump and Sam Mitchell have long argued that the technology threatens bird and bat, bat populations because of the rapidly rotating blades. Yes. And while a recent study may support those fears, scientists have proposed solutions to the problem. Okay, one solution sounds almost too simple to be real. Painting one blade per turbine black so the clueless moron birds can see the damn turbines. All right. Here is measuring seabird 
this is, you know, we're taking, putting all these things out in the middle where millions of seabirds are flying around. Uh, you know, Joe Biden, to save the planet from fossil fuels, is, uh, they, they talk about these windmills uh, screwing up uh, whales. They, they need to be talking about seabirds. They're, they're putting thousands of these goddamn things in the flight path of millions of seabirds who have never had to deal with these things. So anyway, what they're trying to figure out, researchers are tracking seabird migratory patterns so turbine controllers. What the fuck is a turbine controller? An offshore wind turbine controller can, pl can plan to shut off the propellers ahead of incoming flights of seabirds. Okay, but bats are even at higher risk than birds. Almost a million bats are killed by wind turbines in North America every year, putting some species at risk of extinction. Okay. Now this one, uh, oh, here's, here's a great one. One solution that could help protect bat populations is only turning on the turbines during high winds. Smaller bat species aren't able to fly at all during windier conditions, which means they would only be at risk of being struck by the blades when winds <coughs> allow them to fly towards the turbines in the first place. <coughs> there you go. Can't argue with that one. How about this one? Raise the speed of the turbine. Raise the speed of the turbine. And one more, <coughs> another potential solution involves blasting the wind turbines with ultrasonic sounds that deter bats but cannot be heard by humans. Okay. Now this next one, uh, titled The Strange Bedfellows Slowing a Greener U.S. Grid. I, this, I don't know if it really belongs in this rant. What it's talking about, it's a, it's a good article, it's a long involved article talking about what nobody is talking about. And that's these goddamn power lines. These hundreds, these thousands of miles uh, 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 of these goddamn power lines that are going to be necessary. Uh, the, the absolute environmental destruction, everything about the, these big ass power lines. And I, and I see them going up in here in Florida already, every single thing about uh, the, 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 these power lines is, is, uh, is just a planet eating catastrophe. And, and uh, when you add in this entire layer of this uh, bright green lie, uh, of this goddamn bullshit renewable energy transition. Nobody wants to talk about the goddamn power lines. Uh, hook it up, all of this wind power shit, solar farms, geothermal, whatever it is. Uh, how do you think this shit is going to get around us on these damn power lines? Uh, it, 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 it's, it, 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 anyway, uh, I'm not sure it really belongs in this rant. I might come back and revisit it. So guys, 
I'm going to end up with this one because I'm hoping that that nobody has uh, that nobody's listening. It's a long article about you know little kids grappling with climate anxiety as youths grapple with climate anxiety they turn to activism and education for <laughs> they turn to activism and education for <laughs> for 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 Hope. All right, so we, we, we've heard all of these stories before. Uh, you know, here is some teenage girl uh, talking about uh, from, from Honduras uh, how, how she can't even go barefooted on the beach anymore because of all the needles and plastic jutting out of the sand. Uh, she'd always try to clean the beach, uh, but the next day the junk was there again. Oh, God. And um, I remember thinking, my God, where are we headed? And why are people not paying attention? Yes. Youth, in general, are stressed about the climate, exhibiting signs of climate anxiety. We've all uh, heard about it. And, and uh, guys, you know, there's some rumor, uh, a myth or not, that I am uh, an anti-natalist, that... I obviously I hate children. No, it's who I don't care for is fucking breeders. All right, it's the grown-ups in the room, particularly the grown-ups in the bedroom. Uh, I, I I don't care about. Okay, I'm not the heartless bastard that that people have me made out to be. That, uh, that I don't like children, so uh, I, I hope they all die uh, some horrible, uh, painful, brutal death or something. Uh, no, it is their clueless moron parents. I am an antinatalist. But that's talking about the breeders uh, bringing these kids. Uh, no law, no wonder they, they, these kids are freaking out. They're fucked. They're as fucked as the coral reefs. They're as fucked as the rainforest. You, you, you know, uh, all of their little beach cleanups. And they're, you know, whatever they're, they're, they're talking about and their, their nature study and, you know, all of this talk that, that we, we have to get kids back into nature. Well, you take a damn kid uh, out into nature as this kid in, in Honduras and saying, can't even go to the fucking beach anymore without getting a goddamn needle. Uh, through my heel. You know? Uh, taking kids out into nature so they can see how much nature's fucked. But there was one, this is a log involved. Uh, where is it? I really did like this one kid and we're going to wrap up. Um, this is Skyler Ayers, a sixth grader, I, uh, talking about Skyler has been receiving an environmental education since kindergarten. Uh, let's see, was it Skyler who had? Okay. Uh, 
I was thinking this. No, they, uh, anyway, I was hoping this was a, a direct quote, uh, that she has figured out that humans, humans have done a lot of harm to precious ecosystems. Yes. Uh, where does it? Anyway, I thought that was going to be, uh, I like this one. Oh, here we go. This is, this is her. This is Maura Letterno, a sixth grader. Okay. <clears throat> I hope factories, I hope factories come less and less. I think you'll get your wish, uh, Maura. And then pollution will become less and less. And then the world will become good again. Make the world good again. There you go. I like Maura's uh, little headline. Make the world get good again. <clears throat> okay. If Maura could fix one thing about the environment. One thing. So more, I was say, okay, Maura, if you could fix one thing about the reason why you're so fucked, what would it be? It would be the people. Quote, the people, people, are the reason that this happened according to the sixth grader Mora. Thank you, Mora, for summing it up. A fucking 12-year-old knows what the problem on this planet is. It's humans. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up because, oh shit, uh, I'm missing uh, Sandy and Jennifer talking about how fucked the Arctic is. I figured I didn't need to do anything about the Arctic in this rant. So, uh, I'm gonna go from ain't gonna happen to, uh, uh, it's gonna happen uh, a lot, uh, it's a lot worse and happening a lot faster than previously expected over there at Environmental Coffee House. Bye, guys. We're still dogging. We need to make some dinner happen around here.